Hey everyone, I'm Jillian. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to go over basically what I have read this week. I got a lot of reading in and I read some books that were fantastic and one book that I wasn't terribly fond of, but that's okay. The first book that I finished up this week was Winter Garden by Kristen Hanna. In this book, we follow a family that has two daughters. They are extremely different from each other. They have a mother who they have never gotten along with. She's always been very cold and distant from them. And then they have a father who they absolutely love. Pretty early on, you find out that the father is dying. On his deathbed, his wish is that the mother will tell the girls a story. This story changes what they thought they knew about their family and it kind of just shakes everything up and makes them question who they are. This book took a very long time to get going, which is okay. I do enjoy a slow burn, but it just, nothing much was happening for about the first half of the book. At about the middle point, that's when the mother starts telling the story and I greatly enjoyed that. For me, the story that the mother told was absolutely the best part of it. I think the reason that I didn't enjoy it as much as I might have is because I had pretty much just finished reading Atonement by Ian McEwan. It felt very similar. I mean, they're not similar, but then again, they are. They both start out with plays and they both have World War II aspects. Both stories you're following families that are essentially torn apart. They're not torn apart in the same way. In Atonement, the youngest daughter has a really active imagination. She observes a flirtation between her sister and the son of a maid. Basically a crime comes out of that. I won't go into that because I don't want to spoil anything for you. But the family gets torn apart and then there's this twist at the end. And I adored this book. In this case, you have a family that's torn apart, that's essentially always been torn apart with this cold and unfeeling mother. And you're kind of trying to put things back together and figure out why she's always been cold. I did feel like Atonement was slow as well, but this was a nice slow burn for me. The first half of the book was one day essentially, and then things really got going and it built for me. So it started out maybe a three and then it got better and better and better until it ended and I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Winter Garden just kind of petered out and mm, it ended on a sour note for me. If you plan on reading both of these books, don't read them together. Don't read them anywhere near each other because I think they're they're just too similar. For me, this was the clear winner. The next book that I finished is the first book in the Pinch of Magic series by Michelle Harrison. I don't have a physical copy of this book and I really wish that I did because the cover art is absolutely gorgeous. And incidentally, Jack from Spread Book Joy just put out a video this week on the illustrator, Melissa Castrion. I would love to pick up more books that she has had a hand in because the colors that she uses and the artistry, her style, it's just, it's very captivating. I will link Jack's video down below. Go check it out because she, she shows a lot of the illustrations in a number of different books that Melissa Castrion has illustrated. But the Pinch of Magic book, I I wasn't sure what to expect. So it is a fantasy middle grade. And I have to say, I, I think I'm beginning to decide that I don't like adult fantasy so much for the most part. I'm, I'm This is not a 100% thing, but I think that I don't really like adult fantasy, but I really enjoy fantasy in my middle grade books. And this one just really did it for me. The story is about three sisters. They live with their grandmother who owns this tavern. One night, the girls are trying to sneak out and go do an activity that they really want to do. The grandmother appears like that and whisks them away, takes them home and tells them that they are in fact cursed and they cannot leave their little island area. The rest of the story is about basically trying to break this curse and figuring out the history behind the curse. And it was a lot more 
gripping and exciting than I expected it to be. It was a lot darker than I expected it to be as well. I really enjoyed the plucky spirit of the girls. They all had their own unique personalities. My personal favorite character, even though she's not in it a ton, is the grandmother. She's fiery, she smokes a pipe. There were a couple of times in the book where Though it didn't use any bad language, it made it clear that the children, one at least one of the girls, was kind of saying some things that she shouldn't be saying. And the way that it allowed the reader into that is it said the sister was saying things that she would only have known by listening to her grandmother. It very much made me chuckle and kind of completed this feisty, spirited grandmother in my mind. I. I just, I really enjoyed her. Can't wait to continue on with it. And I think I read it in just like a couple days. So it, it was really good. Final book that I started reading this week is The Boys in the Boat by Daniel James Brown. This is about a group of nine boys from University of Washington who in 1936 won the gold medal in the Berlin Olympics. These kids were not from the wealthy families. They were from working class families and they had to get their grit and their determination and their drive from somewhere. And boy did they ever. I mean, times were so different in the 30s, of course. Uh, a lot of things have changed. You had the depression going on. You had the Dust Bowl. The end of the Great War was practically within reach. And in the other direction, you've got World War II that's coming on. The family unit was a very different thing back then. There's so many wonderful quotes that I just want to mull over and enjoy in this book. So here's one quote that just begins a chapter. It says, it is hard to make that boat go as fast as you want to. The enemy, of course, is resistance of the water, as you have to displace the amount of water equal to the weight of men and equipment. But that very water is what supports you, and that very enemy is your friend. So is life. The very problems you must overcome also support you and make you stronger in overcoming them. I, I just think that's such a lovely sentiment that it is the difficult things in life that really give us the substance of our beings. And, um, you know, without having things to overcome, you never develop that grit that is so important in being successful at life, whatever success means. I'm really, truly enjoying this. It's very well told. It's not just a list of facts. It's captivating and draws you in and it has these wonderful descriptions. It talks about this one boat. One of the rowers said that the only way to keep from tipping over in this boat was to part your hair in the middle and divide the chewing tobacco evenly on both sides of your mouth. And that was the only way to stay afloat. And I just, I love the imagery of that. So there happened to be a crew race going on, uh, I think this past weekend, between a couple of the colleges around here. So and I got a little bit of footage of that. So that is it for today. That's my little update on everything that I have been reading. Thank you all so much for watching. I'd love to hear if you have read any of these books and I'd love to hear what you're reading. I did do a full review on atonement. If you'd like to hear more of my thoughts on that, then it's right up here. Go check out that video. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.